Hello. This video will guide you through the Mayo Clinic recommended process for collecting umbilical cord blood after birth. We will walk through each step of the procedure from beginning to end, including preparation for cord cleansing of the cord site, umbilical cord blood collection, including the scenario where the placenta detaches early, labeling of the specimen, completing paperwork, and placing the specimen in the shipping container. Please note, there is a checklist included in the kit received by the parents. The checklist also reviews the steps for the collection protocol. When checking the actual collection bag, you will need to check under sterile conditions if you are in the operating room. The date should be located on the outside of the bag. If the bag is outdated or damaged, discard the bag. As soon as the baby is delivered, double clamp the umbilical cord and cut the cord between the clamps. Approximately 5 to 10 centimeters of cord is typically left at the umbilicus. Next, take the collection bag out of the foil cover, open the plastic and remove the collection bag. The bag can be taken out of the foil cover and placed on the delivery table prior to delivery. In the case of a cesarean delivery, the foil should be removed and the bag placed in a sterile manner on the instrument table. The placenta is still in utero, so choose a venipuncture site near the distal end of the umbilical cord. It is important to sterilize the collection site, so use rubbing alcohol before you begin. Then, Wipe the same site with one providone iodine swab for 15 seconds. Discard it once you have finished. Using a second iodine swab, start in the middle of the collection site and move the swab upward one inch. Rotate the swab 180 degrees and start in the middle of the collection site and move the swab down an inch. Discard the used swab once you are done. Take a new sterile alcohol pad and wipe away any excess iodine. Once you have completed these steps, it is important to not touch the puncture site to keep it sterilized. Now collect the cord blood. Keep track of the number of needle insertions made during the collection if more than one insertion is needed. Take the donor care needle guard and position it on the cord tube between the needle hub and the pinch clamp. Engage the pinch clamp by pressing down on the white clamp. Check to make sure the cap is placed securely on the air vent so no air can escape. While the pinch clamp is in place, find the umbilical vein in order to insert the needle into it. If the needle penetrated all the way through the vein, the blood will not be able to run into the collection bag. To get the most out of the cord blood, the needle insertion site should be just above the clamp on the cord. To collect the cord blood, you need to open the white clamp on the collection bag tubing to start the blood flow. The blood will mix with the anticoagulant in the bag. Make sure to unfold and straighten the bag and then lower it in order to collect the blood. Keep the collection bag one to two feet below the collection site and continue to move the bag back and forth in order to mix the anticoagulant with the blood. The collection time can take between three to five minutes. Try to collect as much cord blood as possible. If you happen to place a needle through the vein or if the vein collapses while you are collecting, you will need to find a new insertion site more proximally on the cord, closer to the placenta. You may need to use more than one needle insertion site. Don't forget to clean each site like we did previously with the alcohol and the iodine. Once the blood has stopped flowing, close the white clamp while the needle is still in the vein and remove the needle. Slide the donor care needle guard halfway over the needle hub. Next, hold both sides of the donor care needle guard near the front with one hand and then hold the tube while pulling smoothly. Pull the needle into the donor care needle guard until it locks into place. Double check the needle is locked by listening for a second click as the needle goes into the donor care needle guard. Check to make sure the tube cannot be pulled through the needle guard. Drain the blood from the tube by holding the tubing above the bag and opening the cap on the air vent. To finish, tie a tight knot in the tube near the bag.
cut off any excess tubing, both the excess tubing and the needle can be thrown away in a sharp container. Place an ID label on the cord collection bag for both the mother and for the baby. Both the date and time of collection needs to be included on the label. Now that the cord collection is complete, the cord blood will be given to the parents. Keep the cord blood bag at room temperature and do not refrigerate. It is possible that the placenta becomes detached from the inside of the uterus during or after delivery. If this is a case, there are a few steps to keep in mind. Immediately after delivery, place the placenta on a tray and clamp the placenta at the bottom with the umbilical cord hanging over the edge of the tray. Elevate the placenta in order to begin the collection and follow the previous instructions from this video and in the instruction booklet. You will use gravity to collect as much blood as possible. It is vital that once the cord blood has been collected, to first place the collection bag into the supplied biohazard bag, then into the cardboard box, and then place all into the Credo Cube before shipping it back to Mayo Clinic. Also included in the kit is a temp tail, which records the temperature during shipping. Activate the temp tail according to the provider instructions. Last, but certainly not least, included in the cord blood collection kit is a provider checklist. Please review it, sign it, and return it back to the parents with the cord blood. Thank you for your time. If you or your team have any questions, please contact us at any time at phone number 507-259-4595.